Welcome to the virtual village. It's bonfire night. So loud! <laughs> I hope you guys had a brilliant bonfire night. We certainly have. We've been out in our garden enjoying the fireworks and we've made our own little fire. And of course we're toasting marshmallows because that's what you have to do. So I hope you guys had a brilliant bonfire night, whatever you did, and enjoyed all of the amazing fireworks. I am ah, a bit like a little kid when it comes to fireworks. I just love them. I love all the noises and the lights and I make lots of silly noises like ooh and ah. We have got an amazing time for you though today on the virtual village. We've got all your favourites, we've got hashtag jokes, we've got worship with Esther, we've got Elisha and Abigail's gospel show, if you can hear me above those amazing fireworks, and we've got our worship time, so let's start that now. Every knee should bow, every knee should bow Therefore God has highly exalted him And bestowed on him the name that is above every name So that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, every knee should bow
Hello everyone and welcome to Buddy and George's Bible Quiz. First question is, how many lamps were on the stand that Moses was to put in, in the tabernacle? Two or twelve or seven? The answer is seven. From what tribe were the men appointed in service of the tabernacle of the house of God? Benjamin or Levi or Judah? The answer is Levi. Who was the master craftsman on the tabernacle? Uri or Bezalil or Hur? The answer is Bezali. How old were the sons of Kohath when they went to serve in the tabernacle? 12 or 21 or 30? The answer is 30. What was the age of retirement for those who worked at the tabernacle? 40 or 75 or 50? The answer is 50. Which of these was not used in the construction on, of the tabernacle, goat's hair or badger skin or cow's hide? The answer is cow's hide. What was a tabernacle, a building or a tent? The answer is a tent. When the Ark of the Covenant was in the tabernacle, what was placed inside the Ark? Two cherubim or the Ten Commandments or David's sculpture. The answer is the Ten Commandments. What does the tabernacle mean? Tent of meeting or temple of God or God's house? The answer is a tent of meeting. What is the inner sanctuary called? Holy of Holies or the priest's place? The answer is Holy of Holies. Well done everyone! Mm. <laughs> Welcome to Hashtag Jokes. I'm your host Finn. And I was just finishing off my pudding. We're bringing you the funny of the week. That pudding you ask? Have a guess. It was yellow and stupid. Probably got it right, thick custard. I also love jelly. Do you know how to start a jelly race? Ready, set. Fridge. What is 200 feet tall? Made of cake, fruit, custard and cream. 
and stands in the middle of Paris. Travel Tower. <laughs> well, thank you for watching Hashtag Jokes. That's all. I'm off to get more. to worship with Esther. Today I'm going to be playing Amazing Grace on guitar. Sing along with me. All of us in the village, we sponsor a little girl from Ethiopia. She is five years old and we sponsor her through compassion. For 92 pence a day, she can receive the chance to go to school, medical checkups and nutritional support, vocational training to go into a job, the opportunity to be nurtured by a local church, and the letters that we send will be translated into her language and she'll write back to us. We can do this together. If everybody gives one pound a month, we'll easily cover all the sponsorship costs. During the COVID-19 pandemic, some of the projects have had to close down, but the money that we send is being redirected to provide food and hygiene products for those sponsored children, their families and their local community. Welcome back to another episode on the National Abigail's Gospel Show. Today our topic is don't give up. Many times when we are going through difficult times, we seem to lose heart. So today we are here to encourage ourselves not to give, not to give up. Our God will see us through that see through that difficult time amen Abigail why do we have to hold on we have to hold on and don't give up because our God will never leave us nor forsake us in all situations amen yes indeed we need to ha have trust in our God um, no matter the issues and we have to hold on and then our God will rescue us. Two 
people are good examples um, to us. They were in big trouble, but no matter how big their problems were, um, they did not give up. And that is Job and Paul. This is what it says in Psalm 30 verse 5. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favour lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Amen. So let us keep praying. Let us keep believing. And let us keep trusting in our God and not give up. Our God is on our side. Amen. Thank you for watching another episode of Life and Abigail's Gospel Show. Please subscribe and remember, trust, trust in, in the Lord. Lord. Bye. Buddy and Joy know it's really important to stay healthy and active, but not just their bodies, also their minds. They're in training to work out the word. Bambi, to yes? be God's child, do we need to become good at loving? No. God help us grow in love after we became his children. Where does true love come from? God. Excellent. So, how did God show his love? Sending Jesus to send us from death. To save us from death, you mean? To send us from How do we show God to others? By showing love. Excellent. Hey everybody, let's take a look. Near the end of the Bible is a really little book. It's got a lot of stuff that we can learn So come on everybody, it's time to turn To the letter we call First John Oh look, we're back again! This is Phil, and we're going through First John This is Emily Elephant, also going through First John And this is Sam, I'm going through Fourth John There's no such thing as Fourth John Does that mean I can't go through it? It makes it difficult but we are on chapter 4 of First John, so we got the number 4 in there somewhere. Eh, it'll do. Hey, elephant, read the verses. I don't know what they are. Hang on, Sam, I haven't given her the verses yet. We're going through First John, where the Apostle John tells us what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus, a Christian. He talks about three things, remember? True teaching, true living, true loving. And he keeps going over them in circles, around and around and around. Which one is he talking about now? Teaching? Or living? Or loving? We'll find out when we read the verses. Uh, Emily, can you read chapter 4, uh, verses 13 through 21? That sounds kind of long. It is kind of long. Do you think you can do it? Okay, hang on everybody. Here we go. We know that we live in God and God lives in us. We know this because God gave us his spirit. We have seen that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. That is what we teach. If someone says, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, then God lives in him, and he lives in God. And so we know the love that God has for us, and we trust that love. Okay, let's stop there. I'm not done. I know, but there's some good stuff there. Do you know what the Trinity is? Oh, we learned this in What's in the Bible. It's the three people in God. Three persons in the one people. That is... God, it kind of confuses me. Yeah, it is kind of confusing. Over and over again, the Bible says there is one God, just one. Other nations believed in lots of gods, 10 or 20 or even 100. That'd be a lot of gods to keep track of. Who are you supposed to pray to first? What a nightmare. But the Israelites are told over and over that there is only one God. Not many gods, just one. Simple. I like it. But the Bible also says there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three gods inside one God. Nope. Not three different gods, one God with three persons. Can you explain that a little more clearly? Not really. People have tried all sorts of ways to explain this. Some have said God is like an egg. An egg has three parts, the egg yolk, the egg white, and the egg shell, but it's one egg. That makes sense. Yeah, but it's not right. 
Jesus isn't a part of God. He's all God. The Holy Spirit isn't a part of God. He's all God, too. So the egg thing doesn't really work. Other people have said, well, maybe God shows up as these three different persons at different times. So God might put on his Jesus clothes or his Holy Spirit clothes. I guess that could work. Yeah, but no. There are places in the Bible where all three persons show up at the same time. Like when Jesus is baptized, he's there, and then the Holy Spirit comes down from the sky, and then God the Father speaks out of the sky, all three at the same time. So they're different, and yet the same. Remind me why you brought this up. Oh yeah, because this is a spot in the Bible that mentions all three persons of God. We know that we live in God and God lives in us. We know this because God gave us his spirit. We have seen that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All three, Father, Son, Spirit. Bingo! Trinity bingo! Can I go on to the next chunk? Okay, go on. Ahem. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in him. If God's love is made perfect in us, then we can be without fear on the day God judges us. We will be without fear because in this world, we are like him. Where God's love is, there is no fear because God's perfect love takes away fear. It is punishment that makes a person fear. So love is not made perfect in the person who has fear. Okay, let's stop again. Love, 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 fear, love. That's what I got. What are we afraid of that we're not supposed to be afraid of? Right. Someday God is going to set everything straight. Someday everyone who has hurt anyone else will have to pay for what they've done. Sort of like getting called to the principal's office. Ooh, I don't like getting called to the principal's office. Nobody does. Everyone knows they've done some bad stuff. They've hurt other people. And the idea of being called before God to pay for what we've done is pretty scary. So John is reminding us of something. When God's love is in us and Jesus has paid the penalty for us, we have no reason to be afraid of that day. God has already forgiven us. God's perfect love takes away fear. We don't have to be afraid of the day we'll stand before God because we know he loves us and has already forgiven us. That's really fantastic. It sure is. Okay, Emily, read the last chunk. We love because God first loved us. If someone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. He can see his brother, but he hates him, so he cannot love God whom he has never seen. And God gave us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Right. If we know God and God's love is in us, it'll show when we're around others. Like a garden hose. A garden hose of love. Yep. Clearly, John wasn't done talking about true love because true love is the center of the gospel. It's the center of who God is. It's what being a child of God and living in the kingdom of God is all about. God calls us to a life of amazing supernatural love and then gives us the power to live that life. See you next time. What a brilliant episode. Now Buddy and Joy have some questions. Can you name the three parts of the Trinity? Is Jesus a part of God? When it's time for God to make everyone pay for the bad things they've done, will we get in trouble? How does it make you feel to know that trusting Jesus means we'll never get in trouble with God? I know you guys are smart and know all the answers to those questions, but if you want to be part of the online Work Out The Word crew, then please send me a video of yourself answering these questions and it could be you next week. we have time for on the virtual village this week there are still fireworks going off everywhere our fire's gone out and we feel a bit 
sick from all the marshmallows. So we're going to call it a night. Thank you to my amazing team who helped me with the virtual village each week. They're all awesome and so are the rest of you guys. See you next week. Bye. Hi Church, we'd just like to let you know about this amazing feature if you're watching via online church. There is a live prayer button that you can click and it'll take you directly to someone on our prayer ministry team who can stand with you um, regarding anything that's on your heart. We know how powerful prayer is. There's no prayer request that's too small or too great for the Lord and we want to stand with you and support you in anything that you are going through. So just hit that live prayer button. It'll take you to someone who will respond to your request um, and you just wait shortly for them to click on uh, and they'll be right with you. Good morning and welcome to Withenshaw Community Church Online. It is our Sunday morning celebration and we are so excited that you could join us. This morning as we get ready to worship, I'm going to read a scripture from Acts chapter 16 and from verse 25. It says, picture this, it's midnight. In the darkness of their cell, Paul and Silas, after surviving the severe beating, aren't moaning and groaning. They are praying and singing psalms to God. The prisoners in adjoining cells are wide awake, listening to them pray and sing. Suddenly, the ground began to shake and the prison foundations began to crack. You can hear the sound of jangling chains and the squeak of cell doors opening. Every prisoner realizes that his chains have come unfastened. That is such an amazing word of God. This morning, as you release your sound, you release your praise, not only will your chains be broken, but the chains of the neighbors, but the chains of people around us. Um, I'm so excited. I wanna encourage you as we worship. I know it's locked down and you're probably, you might be on your own at home, but whatever it is that you're going through, this morning, do not hold back your praise. Do not hold back your shout. Lift up your voice and begin to worship the King of Kings because he is worthy. He will set you free and not only you, but he will set other people around you free. It was for freedom that he came to set us free. Hallelujah. Let's worship the King of Kings. Come let's worship our King. And come let's bow at his feet. He has done great things. See what the Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. Captain and break it. 
What a great God we sing about and celebrate today. He is a risen Savior. He is living. Can you say amen to that? You know, I want to remind you too, He can do abundantly above all we could ever ask or imagine. So whatever your need is today, you need to rely on the fact that He was crucified, but He rose again. And because of His resurrection, you and I have hope. Can you say amen to that? Because of His precious blood, we are renewed and washed and made whiter than snow. Lord, we thank you for your redeeming power. We thank you for your resurrection today. God, you have rescued us. Lord, you have delivered us. And for that, we say thank you. And we worship your name, Jesus. Come on, let's worship him today. For he alone is worthy of our song. You wouldn't let me stay a cat. And so you came to be my rescue To part the waters in my way Oh Jesus, you are my deliverance From death to life From dark to light Jesus, you show me what freedom is. You call my name. You broke my shame. You are my deliverance. Yes, you are. Come on, we sing. You wouldn't let me stay in church. took the wrath that I deserve Your outstretched arms became my rescue Your blood has told me what I
resurrection and the life. You're our deliverance, Jesus. Come on. Let's all lift our voices and sing that chorus again. We sing. Jesus, you are my deliverance from death to life, from dark to light. Oh, and Jesus, you show me what freedom is. You call my name and you broke my shame. Hallelujah. We're just going to continue to worship God with our tithes and our offerings. And I'm still going to read the same scripture that we read earlier on, but I'm just going to focus on verse 26. And it says, suddenly the ground begins to shake and the prison foundations began to crack. Suddenly. This morning, I pray that as we offer our tithes and offerings to God, that the God of suddenly would come and break the chains of fear off of us, break the chains of, of sadness, break the chains of loneliness. As you offer your seed, as you offer your, give your offering to God with all of your heart, the God of suddenly is going to break through into your situation this morning. Yeah, Father, we just want to thank you for every single person who is coming before you right now to give, Lord. I thank you, Almighty God, that you are the God of suddenlies. That, Father God, as this praise goes up before you, the praise and tithes and offerings, oh God, that you will, un you will come down for every single person, God, who is crying out to you, God, for a change in financial in finances almighty god for a financial breakthrough almighty god for a job for a relationship to be restored god would you do it again you have done it before and father we cry to you and said lord do it again god do it again in jesus mighty name hallelujah the the information is up on your screens on how you can give online um yeah god bless you as you give and let's worship him together in jesus name amen
family a few weeks ago we told you about an exciting adventure that we've been on which is to do with loving with ensure the community that we live in so we wanted to remind you about the community grocery if you know any families that would benefit from shopping at the community grocery shop in uh, Shaston at the Message Trust, then please follow the link which is on our website. When you go in the menu and just for, look down it's towards the bottom of the menu, uh, it says community grocery. If you can go click on that, it will give you all the information about what you need to do. It is a uh, five pound subscription for uh, 12 months and then each time you go and shop, which you can go up to twice, um, you just pay three pounds for your shopping all the shopping that you do there's a list of things that you can get so it's pretty exciting um, and if you're on YouTube you can look on the there's a link on the description so yeah God bless you please do use those facilities they're there to help you Hi everyone, I'm so excited about this bit. Um, last week while Pastor Russ was sharing the message, um, this is something that came to my heart and mind that we should do as a church and that is 
raise a hallelujah challenge. Um, so what that means is you send in a video to me of yourself and your or your family just worshiping God or playing the song raise a hallelujah and dancing to it or just literally raising a hallelujah just go I raise a hallelujah and send it to me um, and we're gonna put this all together and what we want is a sound to rise up from different houses from different streets let the praises of God just begin to rise up because God says he inhabits the praises of his people. So get ready, get your cameras together, get your phones together and let's do this. Raise a hallelujah. So we're going to be starting WCC TV. So please tune in at five o'clock on Sunday. And yeah, we're just going to have an amazing time together. We hope to see you there. Invite somebody. Make sure you comment um, as we go through the things that are happening. And just so we know that you're there, guys. We love you and we're so excited about this. Let's make this work, guys. WCC TV. Be there. See you this afternoon. Good morning. It's lovely to be with you again, even if it's not actually in person. This morning, we're going to join with people all across our community, across the country, and from all around the world in remembering those who have given their lives in war so that we might be free. It's good at this time when our freedoms are constricted by our concerns about our health and that of our friends, families and neighbours to remember the freedoms that we still enjoy. We're free to meet and worship together, even if it's not in person. No one will take away from us that freedom because they do not like what we do or they do not worship the same God that we do. We are free to worship, to pray, to read our Bibles every day in our homes. We are free to talk about the things that we believe to those who are interested. More widely, we are free to approve or disapprove of our government, both national and local. And when the time comes, we can vote for our leaders to continue in office or to be replaced. So we remember and honour those who gave their lives so that we can enjoy these freedoms. We remember and honour those who sent brothers and sisters, parents, children to fight for our freedoms and who have ever since mourned the fact that they never returned. We are free because of those who gave limbs or in other ways gave physical or mental health so that we can be free. Above all, we remember with gratitude the one who died so that we might have that greatest freedom, the freedom from sin and death. The scripture reminds us, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. But God commends his love to us, 
in that while we were sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. So let us remember and pray for our brothers and sisters still fighting the spiritual battle so that those who have never yet heard can learn about the freedom that Jesus has bought for them. Let us remember and pray for those who are still involved in physical battles in Yemen, in Syria, in Azerbaijan and around the world. Let us pray that God will restrain the men of violence and bring peace. God bless you and may you know his peace today. Amen. Hey, welcome to Winnie Show Community Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. This morning, as we remembered all those who have given their lives for the peace and the freedom that we enjoy today, I would like to take an opportunity and I would like a little prayer as we open our service. Why don't you just join me? Oh God of truth and justice, we hold before you those men and women who have died in active service as we honor their courage and cherish their memory, may we always put our faith in you, Father. For you are the source of life and the source of hope, now and forever. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Hey, the title of my message this morning is Don't Give Up. How many know that when your world is shaken, when you are faced with various challenges, when you are faced with a pandemic, when you are faced with two lockdowns in one year, it's really easy for fear to spread. But God promised to be with us no matter what comes our way. What's interesting as Christians is the fact that now more than ever, we are reminded that church isn't about the building. Church is the people. Church is you and me. Yes, we are the church. So I want to remind us all that even though our building is closed, the church continues to be alive and active more than ever. And God is equipping His children to be the light in the darkness. And this morning, I want us to look at two different passages. A passage from the book of James and also a passage from the book of Acts. Now, the book of James was written by the brother of Jesus. By the way, each New Testament letter has its own special theme. 
It has its own special purpose, its own destination. Now, the main theme of the book is spiritual maturity, the mark of a mature Christian. And James is writing this letter to a group of Jewish Christians who have been going through a very difficult season. These are people who have been chased out of their homes, people who were being stoned and killed for their faith, and they were going through a very difficult season. How many know that just because we follow Jesus, it doesn't mean that everything is going to be great? There are times when we'll be facing challenges and be facing difficulties. And this is the advice of James, the brother of Jesus, who gives us all as believers. I want to read from the book of James, and I will pick up from chapter 1, verse 2, and I will be reading from the message translation. And it says this, Consider it sheer gift. Some translations say, consider it pure joy. So it says, consider it a sheer gift, my friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. I think we can all agree that we have all been in those seasons. It's like you're being hit for one thing after another. Don't you feel like 2020 is like one of those seasons where it's just not like raining down, but you're being hit from all angles? Well, who loves those seasons? Let me know in the comments area. Who loves those seasons? <laughs> yeah, me neither. But right from the start, we are being challenged by James to consider those seasons as a gift, or other translations put it as a joy. Then he continues in verse 3. You know that under the pressure, your faith life is forced into open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. If you don't know what you are doing, pray to the Father. He loves to help. You get His help. Wow, what a great advice. Difficult seasons are sometimes unavoidable. And the reason I'm saying season is because it won't always stay that way. It will pass. Similar to the fact that we can't avoid winter. Uh, you know what? Um, if I could, I would actually love to be able to skip winter. Winter's cold. Winter's wet. Winter's windy. And it's just horrible. But I have to go through it. But how many know that it helps when I'm actually equipped to face winter season. When I'm equipped, I can dress warmer, I can avoid certain activities, I can enjoy the central heating and the boiler. Uh, how many know, uh, you know, it's amazing to have a, a nice hot uh, shower in this cold weather. But I have to be equipped in order for me to be able to make the most in this season. And how many know that the winter also has its own benefits. Even though winter can be brutal, it has many health benefits. When it's cold, our bodies are actually working harder to maintain the body temperature. So you know what happens? As a result, we are burning more calories. And the benefit to that is the fact that we can eat more in Christmas time. And we can enjoy our meals, knowing the fact that our body is actually burning more calories. I don't know about you, but I also suffer from a lot of allergies. Uh, the cold temperature also helps to reduce allergies. So even though I don't like winter, I can't avoid it. But what I can do is I can learn to be equipped so that I can actually make the most out of it and enjoy its benefits. In the same way, James is literally reminding us, hey, we all have to go through this difficult season. We have to learn to make the most out of this season. And when you do that, you can get to a place where you can consider difficult seasons literally as a gift. So you can consider it a joy. Why? Because your faith will show its true colors. Uh, don't, don't try to avoid those seasons. Go through them so you can become mature. James reminds us, hey, if you're finding it difficult, if you're finding it hard, just pray to your father. Yes, pray to him because he loves to help. You will get out of this. How many agree? It's so pleasing to hear that, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So here, James is encouraging believers to know that if you're going through some challenges in your life, number one, you're not alone. 
And number two, the best reward in life is not having a life free of problems, but actually getting through it. We need to learn to handle the challenges we face better in this life because I do think some Christians really feel like, hey, I got saved. I'm following Jesus. Why is all this bad stuff happening to me? I think there comes a moment when you have to realize that if there is a lack of difficulty in your life, there might be a lack of progress as well. Listen, we can't run from challenges of this life. Jesus didn't promise that everything was going to be better. He just promised that he would be with us. So we have to just to figure out how we can handle these challenges better. So this morning, I would like us to look at the practical example from the Bible. We will look at how we can handle challenges in life. And I want us to look at how the Apostle Paul handled the storms and the challenges in life. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, uh, actually in Ephesus, when he was ministering there, he said, I must see you in Rome. And little did he know that before he could uh, actually see Rome, he would be illegally arrested. He would have to face Roman and even Jewish trial. He would be facing imprisonment and even a shipwreck. Now, the Apostle Paul had wanted to preach the gospel in Rome and, and then to literally go to Spain, but he had no plan to travel there as a prisoner on a ship. And today I'm going to pick up the story from right in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the fight. They were in a serious storm. It was so bad that the crew had to let the ship drift because it was impossible to literally steer it. And as the storm was getting worse, the crew was doing everything they could to keep the ship from sinking. The storm, I mean, it was so bad that they couldn't even see the sun or the stars. So it was literally impossible for them to know where they were. They were in such a hopeless situation and, and all of that happened because one man would not listen to God's messenger and they were literally a, in a real dangerous and life-threatening situation. So I want to pick up the story from Acts chapter 7 verses 21 and I will read from the message translation. With our appetite for food and life long gone, Paul took his place in the myth and he said, friends, you really should have listened to me back in Crete. We would have avoided all these troubles and trials. But there's no need to dwell on that now. From now on, things are looking up. I can assure you that. There will not be a single drowning among us. Although I can't say as much for the ship, the ship itself is doomed. Last night, God's angel stood at my side. An angel of this God I serve saying to me, don't give up, Paul. Let's stop there for a moment. Someone this morning needs to hear this. Don't give up. You know what? God could have sent an angel to say anything. He could have sent an angel saying, tithe more, do more, study the Bible, be a better Christian, do more religious thing. But this angel whispered to the Apostle Paul saying, don't give up. Someone needs to hear this this morning. Don't give up. It's the word of God for you today. Don't give up. You know what? Uh, we are facing a very difficult year. We are now in the second lockdown and the word of the Lord for you this morning is don't give up. Don't give up. This is the word for someone this morning. Why don't you just type in the comments, don't give up. And why don't you just put your name right after that. Don't give up, Pastor Raz. Don't give up. Don't give up. Then in verse 23, it reads on. Last night, God's angel stood at my side and the angel of this God I serve saying to me, don't give up, Paul. You are going to stand before Caesar yet, and everyone sailing with you is also going to make it. So dear friends, take heart. I believe God will do exactly what he told me, but we are going to be shipwrecked on some island or other. On the 14th night, a drift somewhere on the Adriatic Sea. At about midnight, the sailors sensed that they were approaching land, Sounding, they measured a depth of 120 feet and shortly after that 90 feet, 
Afraid that we were about to run aground, they threw out four anchors and they prayed for daylight. Some of the sailors tried to jump ship. They let down the lifeboat, pretending they were going to set out more anchors from the bow. Paul saw through their quest and he told the centurion and his soldiers, if these sailors don't stay with the ship, we are all going down. So the soldiers cut the lines to the lifeboat and they let it drift off. With dawn about to break, Paul called everyone together and proposed breakfast. Let me pause here. Paul called everyone together and I love this. He proposed a breakfast. Listen, it is spiritual. If you're having a bad day, get yourself some food. If you're in the middle of a trial, you know what? It's okay to treat yourself. Place yourself in order with flair cookery, whether it's a nice cooked meal or something nice and sweet. Just treat yourself. You have a biblical example here that while you're going through some storms, it's blessed to take a break and eat. I love this. Let me just continue on. And then in verse 33, he proposed a breakfast. This is the 14th day that we have gone without food. Let me pause here. Can you imagine? 14 days without food? I don't know about you, but I get grumpy and irritated after a couple of hours without food. Imagine how they must have felt like after 14 days, 14 days without food. And then verse 33, none of us has felt like eating, but I urge you to eat something now. You will need strength for the rescue ahead. You are going to come out of this without even a scratch. Let me pause there. Isn't it amazing how the Apostle Paul, in the middle of the worst season ever, the worst trial ever, he still has the ability to speak vision, speak life into those people around him. As we are going through this difficult season, what a great opportunity to ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes, to see the vision and the opportunity to breathe life into those people around you that are giving up. You see, God wants to speak through you a word of hope, a word of life to the people in your sphere of influence. Listen, this is important. He wants to use you. Yes, He wants to use you. Let me continue with verse 35. He broke bread, He gave thanks to God, and He passed it all around. And they all ate heartily. 276 of us all told. With the meal finished and everyone full, the ship was further lightened by dumping the grain overboard. At daybreak, no one recognized the land, but then they did notice a bay with a nice beach. They decided to try to run the ship up to the beach. They cut the anchors, loosed the tiller, raised the sail, and ran before the wind toward the beach. But we didn't make it. Still far from the shore, we hit a reef, and the ship began to break up. The soldiers decided to kill the prisoners so none could escape by swimming. But the centurion, determined to save Paul, stopped them. Let me take a break here. It's amazing how God will even use your enemies to keep you safe. Those that want to harm you end up literally saving you. Isn't that amazing? I want to thank God for that. Let's just read on. But the centurion, determined to save Paul, stopped them. He gave orders for everyone who could swim to dive in and go for it, and for the rest to grab a plank, and everyone made it to the shore safely. Let me just recap what just happened. Apostle Paul began as a prisoner on an absolutely doomed ship, going through a horrible trial, a horrible test. But I love this. From a prisoner, he ended up becoming a captain. And the Apostle Paul took over the situation when it was obvious that nobody else knew what to do. I love the example that the Apostle Paul sets for us. He received the word from God through an angel. Listen, what did the Apostle Paul do with that promise? He shared God's promise with the rest of the people. Today, we are not likely to have an angel come down and bring us a message from God. But what we do have is His promise in His word to encourage us. When the Apostle Paul received that promise, he kept hold of that promise, not only for himself, but he shared it with the rest of the people around him. He didn't keep it to himself. As a result, 
a whole lot of other people that would have probably given up um, had the opportunity to have new life because of him and through his faith in God. Listen, don't give up. In this difficult season, don't just check out. Don't be like everyone else. Don't forget to remember God's goodness. Watch what you feed your mind. Starve your fears and feed your faith. Don't copy everyone else. Why? Because you are called to be different. You are called to be the light in this dark season. I love what Jesus told his disciples. Take heart because I have overcome the world. You know what? You were born for such a time as this. Why? Because you can call on Jesus. And his message to you this morning is, my daughter, my son, my child, don't give up. You see, when you seek Jesus, he will give you strength. And because of the work that he's doing in you, he will save many through you. He will not only save you, but he will save the people around you. Stay strong. Build your faith because you are the light. Listen, your sphere of influence needs you now more than ever than before. You see, as James has told us, we should not run away from the storms in life. Never run away from the storms. We need to plan and prepare. We need to have a strong foundation so that the storms in life don't toss us around. They don't make us prematurely give up. You see, James reminds us all, if you're struggling, simply just pray. And your Father in heaven will hear you and give you strength. I love how the Apostle Paul, because of his relationship with God, because of his maturity and his faith, he knew what this world was going to bring. He didn't end up throwing the towel in the middle of a fight. He kept on going. He kept on pressing. We should never be surprised when we are faced with trouble, when, when we are faced with difficulty, even storms. Why? Because we know that Jesus said, in this life, you will have problems. You will have trouble. So when we are faced with trouble, we should never be shocked. We should never be surprised. Listen, especially as Christians, we should never be shocked in times of trouble. We should never freak out the moment something happens. Don't give up. How do we do that? We spend time with Jesus. We allow Jesus to feed our faith. There are so many Christians who don't spend enough time with Jesus on their own. So many Christians that want to be spoon fed rather than going to the source of faith on their knees seeking heaven for themselves, they want to be spoon fed. Even worse, there are some Christians that the only time they pray is when there is an emergency, when they're stuck and they don't know what else to do. Don't be that type of Christian. Build a strong foundation. Spend time with your Heavenly Father so in times of trouble, you will not run because you know that God is with you. Not only will you be able to make it through the storm, but you will also be able to save others. Can you imagine if the Apostle Paul would have given up? The story would have been very different, but the Apostle Paul kept on seeing it through. When he was a prisoner, he didn't give up. He saw it through. When they didn't have any food and he didn't eat anything, he didn't give up, he just saw it through. Right when the ship broke up on the beach, he saw it through. So today I want to tell you, you need to see it through. Whatever challenge you're facing, you need to see it through. Is it COVID-19 crisis? Don't give up, see it through. Is it the second lockdown? Don't give up, see it through. Is it your workplace? Don't give up see it through. Is it your university or your college or your schoolwork? Don't give up. See it through. Is it your marriage? Don't give up. See it through. Is it the loss of a loved one? Don't give up. Please, see it through. Is it a sickness? Please don't give up. See it through. Don't give up. Don't run from it. Don't throw in the towel. You need to see it through. See it through because you have no idea what God is going to do. Also, sometimes the trials that we are going through is not even about us. It's about the people that are walking with you. It's about the people in your sphere of influence. So if you stop, not only do you miss out, but somebody who you were called to lead and encourage could miss out on all that God has. So if you're struggling today, 
Don't give up. See it through. You have no idea what God is going to do. When we go back to the story of the Apostle Paul, it gets even better or worse, depending on how you look at it. So now they're on the beach and everything should be getting better. But let me just go back in uh, the book of Acts chapter 28 and this is what it says. Once everyone was accounted for and we realized that we had all made it, we learned that we were in the island of Malta. The natives went out of the way to be friendly to us. The day was rainy and cold and we were already soaked to the bone, but they built a huge bonfire and gathered us around it. Paul pitched in and he helped and he had gathered a bundle of sticks, but when he put them into the fire, a venomous snake rose from his torpor by heat, stuck his hand and held on. Seeing the snake hanging from Paul's hand like that, the natives jumped to the conclusion that he was a murderer getting his just desserts. Let me pause there for a second. You know what? Just a quick reminder. Be careful when you judge somebody on their journey. You have no idea what they've been going through. It's like, man, man, that seems a bit harsh. He's going through something, but he's, he's not a murderer. As Christians, we need to learn and give people grace, the same grace God has given us. Let us just give people grace and believe God's best. And no matter what, then in verse 5, Paul shook the snake off into the fire, none the worse for wear. They kept expecting him to drop dead, but when it was obvious he wasn't going to, they jumped to the conclusion that he was a god. What's wrong with these people? One minute he was a murderer and now he's a god? You know what? You know what this shows us? This shows us that we should not live for the praises of people or even die from the criticism as well. We live for audiences of one. God is our source. God directs us. Some people are going to love you and some people are going to hate you. But remember this, only, only Jesus died for you. So they jumped into the conclusion that he was a God and there was a man there in that town who had a sick father. Then in verse eight we read, Paul went to the old man's room and when he laid his hand on him and prayed, the man was healed. Word of the healing got around fast and soon everyone on the island who was sick came and got healed. And this is incredible. Imagine if you were the Apostle Paul. You've been through a mad storm and somehow you made it. And now that you're on the shore, now that you're in safety, then something else comes up. Have you ever gone through that kind of season? A season where you're like, God, if I just could have a breather, it, it would be so nice. Have you ever been there? Imagine the Apostle Paul's finally there. He made it through the storm. He's on the land and he's setting up the fire. And then all of a sudden a snake jumps at him. Right there and there, the Apostle Paul's faced with a decision. A decision that us Christians are faced with it all the time. What will you do when the enemy jumps at you? What will you do? now? I was, uh, last night uh, was the bonfire night and I don't know about you, but it's beautiful just watching the fire. It always reminds me uh, of my days camping. Uh, when it's cold, when it's dark, it's just so comforting when you're sitting around the fire. Listen, if you're doing what you're called to do on this planet, you should be starting fires because the, the light of the glow, the more Jesus will be reflected. So you shouldn't have a life where you're not building fires and seeing them get bigger and bigger. And this is the point. We need to remember this, but the bigger the fire, the more snakes are jumping at you. So Paul gets hit by a snake and he's got an option. If he sits there and he doesn't do anything, he dies. But he says, I have to keep moving. So what does he do? He shakes the snake off. He shakes the snake off. And this morning I wanna tell you, to shake off everything that you have allowed to stick on you. Maybe something jumped out of the fire that you didn't expect. You have every right to shake it off because the reality is the devil is going to throw some things at you, but you have every right to shake it off. How do you do that? Here is how you do it. You go to the source and you tell him, Jesus, help me. 
I don't know what to do. I don't like what's happened to me, but I refuse to let the old failures to stick to me. I refuse to allow and let the old pains to stick to me. I refuse to let the old discouragement to stick to me. I will shake it off. I will shake it off. Why don't you put in the comments, I will shake it off. Listen, I want to remind you of what Jesus said. Hey, take heart. I have overcome the world. Make a decision from now on. When the storms hit you, don't give up and shake it off. Don't give up and shake it off. Don't give up and shake it off. I know that God is speaking to so many of you right now. There are so many of you right now here in the middle of a storm. You're in the middle of it and you need God's power. You need His presence. You need His comfort. So I want to pray for you. I want to take this moment and just pray a prayer for you. Father, I want to pray as we continue with our journey here on this earth, Father, that no matter what we are faced, no matter the storms and the challenges that we come across, even during this difficult season, Father, I want to pray that you uh, help us not to run from the fight, Father. I want to pray that you help us not to give up when things get hard. I want to pray that you remind us to shake off those things that are trying to strangle us, Father God. And I want to pray as we that we recognize that no weapons that are formed against us will prosper. Father, I want to pray that you, your presence would go and bring comfort in every home right now, Father God. Help us to consider it a gift and a pure joy. When we are faced with trials, Father God, and I want to pray right now for strength. I want to pray for hope. I want to pray for love for everyone that's watching this service right now. In Jesus' precious Father name we pray. Amen and amen. As we keep praying today, I want to thank God for every one of you that has tuned in. God has brought you today because God wanted you to hear this word. In fact, many of you, you recognize that you are going through a difficult time. Uh, or, or life hasn't been smooth sailing right now. There are, there are times that God may let us get to a very low place. So all we can do is look up and call on Him. Sometimes the troubles we're in is our own fault and we recognize that our sin has separated us from God. And the Bible is very clear that we have all sinned. But there is a good news. And the good news is that God is so amazing that He sent His Son, Jesus, who is perfect and without sin. Jesus paid the penalty of our sin. And, and so that when we call on Him, when we call on His name, we'll be forgiven, we'll be transformed, we'll be made new, and we'll be saved. If that's you and you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. If that's you and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior, would you pray this prayer right after me? Heavenly Father, forgive me for all my sins. Make me brand new. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Fill me with your Spirit so I could know you, so I could follow you, so I could serve you, so I could live for you. My life is not my own. Today I give it to you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. If you just pray that prayer for the first time, then please click the link below. Please fill in the details so that we can get in touch with you and help you with your next step. I want to thank you again for joining us. See you next week. But in the meantime, have a blessed week. Uh, thank you for that word, Pastor Russ. And I just wanted us to think about what are the practical ways that we can shake off the things that are holding us back. Um, how can you shake off fear? How can you shake off that feeling of loneliness? How can you shake off the things that are gripping you? And you know one way that we can do it is not only with the Word of God, but through worship, through praise. Um, we're going to sing this song, There's Another in the Fire. Whatever it is that you're going through, remember, just like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, when they were thrown into the fairy furnace, a fire that was so hot, it burned those that were, being thrown, that were throwing them into the fire. But Jesus was right there with them. So our prayer is, as we, as we worship together, our prayer is that you would remember that there is another in the fire with you. 
you are not alone. God Almighty is with you and he loves you. There's another in the fire. God bless you. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come on, may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be. so much for joining us we hope you've been blessed and exciting news because we're back in lockdown so we are going to meet on zoom uh, the link is going to be on the church whatsapp group so please join us for teas and coffee and for everyone else god bless you and we hope to see you next week bye in the darkness